Well, Razorback fans, there's a lot of reasons to believe in this team and that everything's going to be hunky-dory the rest of the season. But, you know, I hate to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. There's still some things that scare me about this team. So let's talk about them on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Inside Arkansas Live, which you can catch every weekday starting at noon on Inside Arkansas and InsideArkansas.com. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. It's the bye week, so we got uh, plenty of things to talk about and plenty of things to get into. And uh, just a little fun reminder, I'm going to be at SEC Basketball Media Days in the beginning of next week, so you'll have some basketball content coming from there. I know football's king right now, and we'll, we'll keep it there, but uh, it's going to be fun to be down there in Birmingham and get to see and talk with John Calipari and, and everything, so it should be awesome. But either way, um, good stuff, though, going on uh, right now in the football landscape, but and, and I'm, I know a lot of you already are just yelling at me in the comments. You're reading the title of this. You're, you're seeing what I'm about to talk about, and you're just you're already pissed off. You're like, this guy is ruining my day. I was flying high. I was drinking the Kool-Aid, and you put a bunch of poison into it. And, and that's not the intent of this, okay? So I want to make that clear. That is not the intent of this. However, I am approaching things and trying to approach things in a much more understanding and logical element because this is still the Arkansas Razorbacks. There's always going to be that feeling of the possibility of it going downhill or it not being as good as what it seems or being too good to be true. I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm praying that's not the case and I'm not saying it will be the case. However, there are still things about this football team, even after that big win against Tennessee, that needs to continue to improve, that needs to continue to get better, and that needs to be uh, hopefully worked on here in the bye week. Now, we can go through and we can talk about individual players uh, and everything, and we could also talk about the, the health, which to me is, is, there's no reason in talking about that because that's every team. Like, yes, health needs to be of the utmost importance in getting everyone healthy, so that's a no-brainer, as I said. Uh, but to me, th- this is the thing about this team. In the first half of that game that Arkansas played against Tennessee, we know that there were multiple opportunities for Arkansas to take the bull by the horns and really run away with the game in the early going. Arkansas at halftime should have been up at least 17 to nothing in that game against Tennessee. They still won. Doesn't matter how it was done. Doesn't matter how it looked. You won. That's all that matters. But let's be honest, they should have been up 17 to nothing. It should have been a game that really wasn't even that close. Arkansas was the better team. They played the better game, all of that. But the problem is, and this is what scares me, is that when the games get in a certain way and you got the guys that are making plays and the offense is moving, doing good things in the rushing attack and in the in the passing attack you're like you're doing everything you're supposed to do but when it comes to that one play that one play that one push that one thing that needs to be done in order to either continue the drive or get points out of the drive arkansas failed to do that a few too many times on saturday You can call it nitpicking, that's fine, but it is a problem. The Razorback defense, as much as I love it, and we talked about it yesterday, and as as improved as they are, they're still not good enough to continue to bail out the offense whenever they don't get points on the board. Because, I don't know if you guys knew this, but you can't win the game if you don't score any points. And you really can't win the game unless you score more points than your opponent. This just in. So the defense has to get some help. They have to get helped out because I I know Tennessee's really good. But 
you got LSU coming up here in a week and a half. You have Mississippi State. You have Ole Miss. You have Texas. Like, you have teams that you're going to be going up against that are good teams, SEC teams, that are going to look to knock you off. Plain and simple. They're going to be playing their A game, and they're going to want to try to really, because you're not, a, you're not a secret anymore. You're not the cute little underdog that no one takes seriously. People saw what you did against Tennessee, and they know that they're going to get a good shot. So you're going to be going up against some high-quality teams here. And it's a matter of what are you going to do about your opportunities. Because I'm telling you right now, if Arkansas plays this game, say against LSU, and they do the same things where in the early part, in the first half, they're moving the ball, they're doing some things in the rushing attack, the, the play calling's there, the execution's there, and all of that. And then they go for a fourth down and don't get it, or they miss a, a field goal that they should make, you know, whatever it is. There's only so many of those that you can have and still expect to win. Arkansas had a lot of them, a lot of them against Tennessee. But luckily for Arkansas, the defense continued to bail them out. You cannot have those too often. And when I mean too often, I mean close to never. <laughs> if you want to win games, you want to be a good team, you have to have it close to never happening. I know it's asking a lot. I'm not saying they're going to be perfect, but thank goodness Arkansas did not turn the ball over because that was also their saving grace too. They didn't turn the ball against Tennessee. If they turn over one time, the game's over. Like It's that simple. The game is over. They lose the game if they turn it over. So... That's the only thing that really scares me, or at least the biggest thing that scares me about this team, is they do so many good things, and they have such a good game plan, and they're doing things to execute it, and they're doing things to really make some noise and get the fans riled up and all that, and then they just waste it. They waste it. You cannot have wasted possessions. Get points no matter what. If you enter into the territory of your opponent, you have to get points. If you enter into the red zone, you have to get points. I didn't even mind the decisions to go for it on fourth down in those early plays that Arkansas had in the game. But you got to execute those plays. You got to get it because that can swing momentum. That can flip the field. That can do so many different things against you. I mean, I know they don't count as technically turnovers, but in a way, they kind of are turnovers. You have to be able to still do the small things, the little details, in the crucial moments in order to win games. Because as much as I love what Arkansas is doing and how well they're playing right now, I'm not going to sit here and try to convince anybody that, hey, don't worry. Don't worry, everybody. They're not going to turn the ball over the rest of the season. No, they're going to have turnovers. It's just common. It means logic. They're going to turn the ball over. And let me ask you this too, folks. Against LSU, if I told you that against the Tigers, you got into Tiger territory on six occasions and came up scoreless, or I guess five occasions and came up scoreless, how would you feel about your chances? I mean, seriously. How would you feel about your chances where you got into the territory of the Tigers and you came up with no points after five possessions. You probably wouldn't feel very, very good. I know I wouldn't. I don't know how you could. So how do you do that? How do you change that? How, how do you work on that? Is that something you just do in practice in the bye week? You know, then there are probably some things you can do. But at the end of the day, it's coming down to guys making plays. Players making the plays. Offensive line getting the push. It's a collective effort. It has to be the right play call. It has to be the right physicality. It has to be the right matchup. It has to be the right cadence. You know, and there's a lot of things that have to go right. But players make plays. Playmakers make plays. And if Arkansas wants to be considered this team that they that we saw on two, on Saturday night, if they want to be the team that we all saw on that field that was going crazy after the game for a celebratory win because they knocked off a top five team, if that is the team that they want to be, they have to start doing the little things. They have to start making the most of those possessions. They have to make the most of their opportunities. You won the game on Saturday. That's awesome, and I love it, and I'm so thankful for it. I'm never apologizing for it. But <laughs> you got to continue to get better. 
Because you, there's going to be times where you play that type of game and you're not going to win. There's going to be offenses that you're going to go up against that maybe your defense can't stop in their tracks. I feel like I'm such a negative Nancy right now, and maybe I am, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep everything in perspective because to me that's very important. We're going to talk about Jaquin and Jackson, the running back for Arkansas, here in just a second, so stay with us here on the Locked on Razorbacks Rex podcast. All right, folks, I'm here to tell you about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page as to where you place your bets. And you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet on FanDuel. They know they have the different odds and the different spreads, money lines, all that good stuff. And it's a reason why. I mean, there is the reason why. It's America's number one sports book because it's the best in the business across the world. So check it out today. It's FanDuel.com. Visit FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I want to talk about Jaquindon Jackson. Jaquindon Jackson. I have been impressed all season long with Jaquindon Jackson. I think everybody who's watched him can see his ability, his playmaking ability his strength, his size, his speed, everything, that's that's big. And so as much as I love him and as much as I'm a big fan of his, the past couple of games have not been ones that have been too kind to Jaquindon Jackson uh, just because of the fact that teams are doing a good job of whether they're targeting him or you know having game plans together to, to make him – you know, I have to think about stuff a little bit more. You know, whatever it is. Like, there's just a lot of things that could be the reason why. But still, he needs to get going again. I love what Braylon Russell was able to provide. I mean, on Saturday. I mean, that was awesome. Seeing him as a true freshman in those moments, making those plays is awesome. And I think we're going to continue to see him be a big part. Especially because I always feel like, uh, you know, speaking of Bobby Petrino, I always feel like he's the guy that uh, loves his big backs. You know, you think about Ronnie Wingo, you think about Broderick Green. I mean, Nile Davis was not a small back by any stretch. Neither was Dennis Johnson. I mean, they may have been small in, in height, but when it comes to their uh, size and ability, they definitely weren't that. So I think that it, it fits perfectly for someone like Braylon Russell to be in the mix and uh, continue to improve and continue to be type of that Petrino guy. But Jaquinn and Jackson right now on the year, he's got 99 carries for 566 yards. He's averaging still 5.7 yards a carry, and he has 10 touchdowns. So his averages have started to go down just a little bit, and we knew that would happen once SEC play uh, comes into play. But, um, you know, he started the year so strong. He had three straight 100-yard games. He had 101 yards against UAPB. He had 149 against Oklahoma State. He had 147 against UAB. And against Auburn, he had 75. But A&M, he had 10 carries for 37 yards. And then against Tennessee, he had 20 carries for 57 yards. Without question, his worst game, even though he had a touchdown there, his worst game was definitely against Tennessee. So 10 touchdowns is great, but I want to see him get going again. I know he's been banged up a little bit. Uh, in fact, I feel like in almost every game, and I'm not. this is not a knock against him at all, so don't take it that way. But I feel like almost every game that I've watched of him so far this year, there's been a time where he's had to, he's been on the on the turf and having to be attended to for an injury for uh you know whether it's a flare up or, or anything. So I know he's banged up, but that's kind of what the whole I won't call it a problem because that's going to be taking it too much. But I think that's the whole concern I always had with Jaquindon is that he's such a big physical back who loves contact. At some point in time, the contact's going to come back on you. And it's part of your game, so you can't run away from it. You can't say you don't want it anymore, but you got to stay healthy, man. You got to continue to stay healthy. And that's where it's important for him to get really healed up this week because they're going to need him, just like all the players. But like Taylor Green's banged up. They got to get him back. And they got to get Jaquin and Jackson back on track, too, because all it's going to do is just add, add more great players and more great playmakers uh, to the Razorback offense. Um, Because I think the offensive line has really done a good job, a better job. Um, They're not perfect, 
but they are getting to the point to where they're starting to feel like a cohesive unit, communication, being on the same page. I mean, what they did against Tennessee was one of the best because pass protection was great. Now that's been their biggest key issue. Running uh, running the ball has never been a huge problem for them, but they got to get healthy and they got to get that going. So I, I still believe in Jaquin and Jackson. I still think he's a thousand yard rusher as long as he can continues to stay healthy. I think he's going to be a key piece in Arkansas's offense, uh, especially catching the ball out of the backfield. And as of right now, he's still on pace to have his best season ever as a as a running back. I mean, last year at Utah, I was a little surprised to see his numbers, but last year at Utah, he uh, got 797 rushing yards with four touchdowns. <laughs> well, he's got 566 yards right now and 10 touchdowns. So he's doing list a little bit better, I'd say. But overall, he's got it going on. And I'm wondering how it's going to be against SEC opponents. And I really hope that's not the case for him to where, you know, he was doing really good against less physical opponents, but then he goes up against, you know, actual legitimate SEC defenses and everything. Like, is that going to be a problem? Because there's no doubt that the least physical teams that Arkansas has played has been UAPB, Oklahoma State, and UAB. And the most physical teams that they played was Auburn, A&M, and Tennessee. So can... Can Jaquin and Jackson be able to match the physicality that he once had? Can he be able to make plays in the SEC? Can he be able to go up against SEC opponents? And can he stay healthy and, and get out there and be that running back that we saw at the beginning of the year? Hmm, I'm hoping so. I really do, because he's really that good, and he could really help out Arkansas. That's for sure. We're going to talk about a little bit of stuff going around with this LSU game. I know it's a ways away, but there's still some stuff I'd like to get into and like to discuss, and then we'll do all that here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast coming up next, so stay with us. All right, folks, you hear me tell you about the Game Time app, right? There's no better app than the Game Time app when it comes to purchasing your tickets for any event. We're talking about sports, we're talking about concerts, we're talking about theater, we're talking about comedy shows, everything. Game Time is the only thing that you ever need when it comes to buying your tickets. They also have a new feature called Game Time Picks that make getting tickets easier for your favorite live event. It filters out the fluff, so it only show you the most incredible deals that they have on great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through all the thousands of different tickets. They get you set up there, too. But it has a, a great personal touch to it, to where when you go on there, you, you it's really easy to navigate. You can see exactly where your seat is going to be before you purchase it. And they have, of course, the all-in pricing, which is the best feature uh, that they have. You can toggle this feature, and it shows the total up front, with no surprise fees at checkout. I can't tell you how many times I have gone to other apps in my life or other things, not even just for tickets, but anything else. And you get one price in the beginning. And by the time you're about to check out, it's completely and totally different. Like it's, it's just a double the price. It's annoying. Well, they put the all in pricing to that way. There is no hidden fees there. So you can check them out today. They, they have the lowest price guarantee or they will credit you 110% of the difference there. And your purchase is also covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the gaming industry, which is huge too. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Man, I'm going to pop my neck. I slept on my neck wrong, so I'm been having to move around, so I'm sorry if that's distracting. But either way, uh, this LSU game coming up next week. We all know what it is about the, the battle for the golden boot and how incredible of a like party it is for fans to be a part of. And, and we know the history uh, for, the, for these teams and some of the back-and-forth games they've had, some of the most epic games and finishes and wins that Arkansas has had has been against LSU. Um, we all know what surrounds it, and it still is very annoying and very upsetting that this game got moved off the, the final game of the year. And it's never going to change. Like, you're, you're just stuck with Missouri, and it sucks. But it used to mean something. I wish it still did. But uh, it, it means a lot, at least in the in the grand scheme of epic games and epic times and epic finishes and all of that stuff. But... LSU's playing Ole Miss this weekend, and that's going to be a really interesting game because two of the opponents that Arkansas still has left on their schedule, those two teams, and both teams look beatable. 
So it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top in that one. Um, but I was looking at like some of the stuff surrounding it. First off, it's going to be on ESPN, which is awesome. I mean, come on, six thirty or six o'clock, whatever it is, the night game. The LSU Arkansas game is going to be at night next Saturday. So already, <laughs> that adds an entire new element of craziness and wildness and fun. Coming off of the win against Tennessee that you had, oh yeah, that adds another extra flavor to it as well. And then you throw in the fact, and maybe you guys don't care about this as much as I do, but just looking at the weather forecast, we're about to get a swift turn to fall, baby. Like we're talking about uh, a temperature of a high of 64 degrees that day with sunny skies and then a low of about 43. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. That's the stuff. That type of fall weather that everybody looks forward to. So it's one of those things that you're going to have to probably dress a little bit warmer for the tailgating and then dress extra warm for the game against LSU when it starts at 6. But all these things are surrounding this to be an epic game and an epic matchup. So it'd be really cool if they could come through and make it happen and be awesome for it. Because I, I'm, I, the Tennessee game was awesome, but this atmosphere and this lead up to this LSU game is going to be next level. So I'm kind of rooting for LSU to beat Ole Miss because I'll add even more juice to it. You know, more epic, epicness, I'm making that a word, to the game itself. But should be a great one. Can't wait. Tailgating's going to be great at least. Hopefully the game is as well. But appreciate everybody listening in and watching in the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John, Buzz John Neighbors. Dude, I haven't done that in so long. Wow. Blast from the past. John Neighbors Show. It's like I'm back in 2023 again. For any questions, comments, concerns that you may have, and we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel. Tomorrow afternoon, have a great rest of your day, everybody. We'll see you then.